Hey everybody, it's Ken Compton, and we are launching the Trim Tab Effect, the new podcast. Um, and we're going to be talking about everything home inspection. And today our first guest is Brandon Goff. Brandon is the owner, Brandon and Sarah, I shouldn't leave Miss Sarah out, the owner of Mountain Sounds uh, Home Inspection in uh, Seattle, Washington, and also Idaho Elite in, uh, in uh, Idaho Falls, uh, uh, in, in beautiful, lovely Idaho where the yep. snow is still on the ground uh, so anyway yeah so today what our topic is going to be is um what happened to brandon a multi-location owner in two different states in 2021 and then looking at some of the crazy headlines coming on about interest rates and inflation and other things what's it going to do to keep it going for 2022 and one of the things that we do um the the trim tab effect is really about uh, making small changes or make small adjustments in your business to make big changes as you move along. And so we'll have a tip for you at the end about one thing that you really can do to uh, increase your business right away. So Brandon, welcome to the podcast. Hey, thanks, Ken. It's great to be here. I'm excited about the podcast and really just excited about everything here we're doing now with the Savvy and, and uh, we, you know, we want to grow the company and, and really provide value to other inspection owner company owners around the country uh, or even the world, you know. Uh, so um, the other thing I wanted to say here is to, you know, after learning kind of what the trim tab effect is all about, you know, making those small changes really can make a huge difference, especially if you can stay consistency, consistent with those changes, make huge effects on, on your life and, and in your business as well. So excited to kind of take that concept and, and apply it to my own life and business. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. I, I definitely did it. When I first read the book years ago, um, it's out of print now. You can still get it on Amazon or you can find a copy here or there. Um, the idea was genius. The book was about something I wasn't really that interested in when I got started reading it. But that one takeaway, those little small adjustments you can make in your business, to affect big changes over time. That was huge. That was a concept that stuck with me forever. It's just taken me a bit to put the, put the podcast together. Mm -hmm. I also want to say too, that Brandon is a success coach at the Savvy Inspector. Uh, he's been doing that uh, quite a while now. And so you guys that are members may already know Brandon, but I know you will. But if you're new to the Savvy Inspector or to the Trim Tab Effect podcast, you may or may not know him. So, Brandon, let's get started talking about 2021. Let's just talk about both locations. Was it the year you expected? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, obviously, you go into any year with these big goals, big aspirations. Um, I don't know if any year really ever plays out um, like you expect it to, right? You know, 2020 obviously um, has had its challenges. Um, and I think maybe kind of leading into 2021 uh, affected some of, some of the market and that kind of stuff. Um, so, so the answer is no, we, we certainly did not expect a lot of things that, ha that happened. And I mean, you know, we had our challenges certainly um, but I think overall it was still a success. I mean, we still had lots of success and, and we can get into some of that more here in a minute, but, um, certainly was not uh, a year we expected with low inventory and, uh, in our Seattle branch, especially we were dealing with a lot of waived inspections. So in order for a house to go pending or get an offer accepted, you know, there'd be 30 offers on the same house and the strongest offer would be the handful of inspections waived or all of their contingencies waived. So that was definitely a challenge and, and really affected the number of inspections available, I think, especially early on in the year and in the spring, especially. So um, so to answer that question, no, it was not what we expected, but you know, we adapted to it and we were still able to find uh, plenty of success and grow. So <laughs> in a million years, I've been in a real estate business in the vertical for a long, long time in this vertical in the home inspection business. And I have never seen, okay, low inventory, you might see that once in a while, but that, that was one thing. But the degree of inventory uh, that was low was incredible. And then I have never, ever in all my put-togethers ever seen people waive the number of inspections that got waived. I mean, that was just something that was an unintended consequences of low inventory. I mean, low inventory generally, did, okay, sometimes in the past you might have had you know, eight or nine, you know, contracts on a house, you know, backed up. But yeah. then for people to, for agents to actually tell client uh, buyers 
if you add the home inspection contingency, it diminishes the value of your offer. And so mm -hmm. we saw the number of people actually waiving the home inspection contingency was just unreal. Yeah. Um, and that caused us all some headaches. And that was something we hadn't really planned for. Low inventory, sure. Fair but enough. waiving the home inspection contingency, good Lord, that was yeah. something I hadn't seen. Well, yeah, I mean, we were having conversations with some of our top agents that we worked with for many years. And they weren't showing up on our schedule at all. And, you know, it just came back to, you know, following up with them. Hey, what's going on? We haven't heard from you in a while. And they just kept saying, yeah, to, to compete with our offers, we've got to waive inspections. And so, I mean, obviously there was some frustration with that. And you worked so hard to build those relationships. And, and then it, you just don't even have the opportunity to, to, to do an inspection on that property, no matter what. Nobody does. So, right. So yeah. one of the other things that you have to manage that a lot of people don't manage when you're a multi-inspector firm and a multi-location uh, owner, especially in two different states, um, some personnel issues have to come up. You have to see your organizational chart like you draw. And it's really a great thing. Mm -hmm. You know, who do I need in the Seattle operation that I'm not there to manage details while I'm not there? Yeah. And then, you know, the same thing in your Idaho uh, branch there, you know, uh, you know, it's like, wow, you know, I got to have a completely separate staff. So, I mean, that that had to have created some challenges for you in 2021. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, we set some really big, huge goals, honestly, um, for the year. And, and we didn't hit the goals. In fact, we were, we were quite short um, a lot of the time. Um, and we, you know, we, we built up the staff that we thought we needed. Um, and, um, you know, that was kind of a challenge that I didn't anticipate. Um, you know, once we made the move from from Washington to Idaho, um, how you know important it was for me to be involved with the team there um, in person, really. Um, and you know, I was out there a few times over the year. Um, you know, we had some challenges here in Idaho where I lost two inspectors kind of back to back, and I was back in the field full time myself. Um, it was either that or let the business go here. And we had worked, you know, two years to, to get it built, built here. So, um, you know, I spent half the year back in the field full time and that took me away from our, 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 our Washington branch. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there, there was definitely challenges that I didn't anticipate. You know, I had never run a business from a, a different state. So, <laughs> you know, yeah, some being an absent owner was something else, wasn't it? Yeah. But I mean, but the great news was that, you know, the business still ran like I was out of contact almost every day with our staff out there and they were still doing inspections. Our scheduling team, they were still scheduling inspections. Um, and, you know, that was the beauty of it is I, I had that opportunity where I could step away basically for six months uh, and still the, the business continued to, to grow and operate without my direct involvement day to day, basically. So. So let's stay with staff for a minute as challenges is in 2021. I, my premise is it's no easier for you to recruit home inspectors or marketing staff inside or outside or other positions in your firm. It's no easier for you than anyone else, but you continue to succeed um, in bringing in new staff um, to do it. So, I mean, is there a secret there? I wish there was a secret or like a secret code or a hack here. Um, you know, uh, I think for us, like, you know, we, we had some challenges, for example, you know, we wanted to do 1600 inspections last year in our Washington branch. Um, and that would have almost doubled what we had done the previous year. Um, we got to about almost 1200. So we, we were short by 400 or so. Um, so we, when, when we started the year, we knew, okay, in order to hit this volume, we've got to have some more people on, on board. So one of those was a scheduling person. So we needed a second scheduler to, to handle that volume um, of calls, basically. We hired one gal, um, and I'll admit, like, we kind of forced it a little bit, and she just didn't work out. It wasn't a good situation for her. It wasn't a good fit. She needed something more than what we could offer her. Um, and then we, to, to get creative, you know, once we, what, what, what happened if you go back by about a, a few months in December of 2020, here in our Idaho branch, we had to replace our, our current scheduler. So we hired, or we interviewed two people. We hired one of them. She was great. The other one was really good too. She just wasn't quite a perfect fit. And then, so once that, going back to Washington, where we were hired for our second 
uh, scheduler. Um, I thought about, well, this other gal that we interviewed here, we didn't give her the job, but we really liked her. And so she actually, we ended up hiring her and she's been fantastic for us. So she actually lives here in Idaho in town with us, but she works and schedules for our Washington side. Um, and so, you know, we've, you know, maybe you call it luck or we were just persistent, but, you know, we were, we were a little creative in our thinking and, you know, we made it work out and, and yeah, I mean, she didn't really understand the geography or the, you know, the layout of the city and, and where our inspectors live. So there's a little bit of training that, that went there, but uh, overall she does a great job. In fact, our average fee increased by like $40 last year. We give a lot of credit to her on that. Um, so um, you know, there's, there's always, like you said, you know, Ken, there's challenges with everybody right now, especially, you know, everybody's looking for work, people to hire. And, and you know, maybe we'll get into this later, but we, we lost some people because, you know, we couldn't match what another job offer that came to them was. And so, um, you know, that, that's another challenge, you know, going into 2022, um, you know, how can we be creative about how we compensate our people so that they feel valued and they are getting the wages that they feel they could deserve rather than going elsewhere to find a, a job that, that pays maybe a little better, so. No, you know, I think that's a big problem. I um, am recruiting two new employees for the Savvy Inspector as we speak, and it's very, very difficult. We have some, you know, pretty specific requirements that you have to Okay, I always tease, if you grew up saying Google instead of mama, you're a candidate for the savvy. Um, so not, you know, not that many people have those skills and the people who have those skills are in high demand. And so the bigger companies are kind of out, out doing us. Um, so we have to look and see what else that we can offer, you know, besides health insurance. And, you know, maybe there's some other things that we could uh, put in to try to compete with the bigger companies. So, so the crazy market with the low inventory and waiving the home inspections. Everybody got through that. You came through that profitably. Um, so overall, were you happy with 2021 and what happened? I mean, we grew by 20%. Despite all those challenges, we were profitable by 20% or so. Like our, our total overall profit was 20%. Um, you know, I, I would have liked to see it higher if we had hit our numbers or even been a little closer to hitting that 1,600 inspection number. Uh, in Washington, especially, um, you know, we, we certainly would have been in a great spot as far as profitability. And, and, you know, that just, you know, part of it was we hired our, our second scheduler and we had a full-time marketing person, you know, anticipating this growth this in, in, in the volume of calls. And that just added to our overhead a little bit. But even after the, all of that, we were still profitable at 1200 inspections or so. And so, um, no, I mean, I mean, yeah, there was some stress and, you know, we had to really uh, adjust to the situation and, and be creative in some of our marketing and, and, and do some things on the fly a little bit. But yeah, I mean, overall, like you can't complain about, you know, being profitable and, and making money and, um, you know, we're looking forward to more of it. Yeah. So, um, so let's think about this. Would you have been successful if you had not had a marketing plan? Uh, <laughs> definitely not. I mean, you, you've, you've got to plan your success. Uh, and, and obviously marketing is a huge part of your business. And, you know, in, in this industry, you know, if you go back, you know, we can go into our, our ISN and we can see what the average number of trans or of, of inspections that we do per agent, um, and this is an interesting exercise for pretty much any inspection company to do. What's the average number of inspections you get from every agent you inspect it for? We ran that number for 2021, and that came out around 2.5 or so inspections. And so that means you're only getting two on average, 2.5 inspections from every agent that comes to you. That means you've always gotta be replacing agents, right? So they come and go and they come and go. And so you got to have a plan to say, how can we increase that number? First of all, who should we target to? What's the target market? What's the messaging? And, um, and then how do we execute that basically? So, um, you know, we've talked about the five pillars and that whole process. And we, with the savvy, we've created a whole system to allow us to plan 
our marketing strategy and, and how we run our businesses, identify our weaknesses so that we can, you know, develop systems to overcome them. Uh, so yeah, I mean, going through the marketing process and planning that marketing system you've got is, is, is something we definitely attribute to our growth for sure. So one of the things, because the market is so fluid, I like to be able to say, what's our annual goals? For instance, in Seattle, you wanted 1,600 units. Okay, so I call home inspections units. Just you, you get to know me, you'll know that's always what I mean. Um, but what happens is that's our annual goal. But I don't think we should plan right now more than quarterly. Okay, because the market is so fluid. I mean, mm -hmm. what we, we could sit here and say, this is what we're going to do for the whole year. And at the end of the first quarter, we're going to throw that in the garbage. Why would we have done that? Yeah. Okay. So by mid-February, we're starting to look at the second quarter and say, here's the things, we see. for instance, how have interest rates impact us? Are they, have interest rates gone up? Have prices cooled down some, which allows more people to enter the market? Um, you know, so what is the situation? So I like to set our planning up quarterly. Now, here's our annual goals. And here's mm -hmm. our first quarter goals, okay? And so here's how we're going to get there, okay? But then when I see I need to make a course correction at the end of the first quarter, it's easy. I, I, I haven't spent all that time planning, and I'm not frustrated with myself. So yeah. because we're fluid. Now, if we were in a static market like we've been in the past, it's easy to develop a 12-month plan. Mm -hmm. But that ain't where we are today. Yeah. Um, so that's it. Now, Brandon, I know one thing. You just didn't do it this year. But you saw this coming because I have been preaching forever about – the agents are losing their stranglehold on the home buyers and home buyers more and more really wanting to look for their own home inspector. And I know that you took a portion of your resources from other marketing strategies and then invested those in online. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in, in your online presence and tell us about that a little bit and what's happened and why that was important to your firm in 2021. Yeah, I mean, we, we've had some conversations internally, at least around, you know, where's the market going? And, you know, you look at these big, you know, uh, real estate companies like Redfin and Zillow, and they're trying to chip away at that market, right? They want to provide a low cost um, home buying or selling experience. And so the, the, that's kind of going virtual as well. And so they're chipping away at that market, you know, <clears throat> so what we've, we've really taken that into consideration and said, okay, how is that going to affect us, you know, three to five years down the road, you know, especially if we see a, a little bit of a downturn and, you know, we're, we're at like the most real estate agents ever in the history of the country, right? Um, right now, um, you know, at some point, you know, if we see a downturn in the market, those people are going to have to go get real jobs again. Um, and their licenses may, may, Wow. And, and, and then, you know, maybe some of these bigger companies are going to start taking a bigger chunk of that market um, and things are going to go more virtual. And, um, you know, traditionally, home inspector marketing has been let's show up to the office, maybe put a candy bowl out. Um, hopefully someone, you know, sees our card there or our flyer. Um, but, you know, especially in Washington, I don't know that we're ever going back to offices out there. I mean, even still here in, in the early 2022, you know, there's nobody in the office anymore out there. You know, it, people have just gotten so much more used to working from home. So circling back now, you know, going two or three years ago, we said, okay, we really want to invest in our online presence. If we can build that up slowly over the next couple of years, we'll be in a great place when this thing really turns and people are really starting to go online to search for their inspection company, right? Um, and, and, relying less on that relationship with the agent because obviously that's so finicky and, and you say one thing and all of a sudden this top producer that you've been working with for years and they've trusted you with hundreds of clients are no longer using you because you screwed up their deal or something, right? Um, and so, uh, you know, the online presence, you know, we've done with videos and we've done, you know, push really hard with our reviews. Um, I know I'm all over the place here, but... <laughs> Well, you got a website that converts and um, you're listed in every directory where people look for a home inspector. Um, so how many home inspections, and you, I know you're not in front of your numbers, just roughly, um, do you think you guys booked in 2021 where you never talked to the client? I would say a third. Um, no, obviously, that's a rough number, but um, right. a third of them. So 1,200, what's the third of 1,200? 400. 400 inspections, yeah. Yeah. 
So, I mean, it, you know, that's the best thing. I get a notification every time that, that, that someone pings one online and I'll be laying in bed. I'll be at dinner with my kids. That's the best one. I right? like didn't have to work for that one at all. Yeah, you says ping. And now, of course, you're always going to call back and after they've booked and, right. you know, make sure they have everything they need and all. So that's it. But we have clients just like yourself that um, three, four, five hundred home inspections a year booked online without ever talking to the client because your website was so effective. It, it allowed the home buyer to convince themselves you were right for them uh, so that they didn't buy the money pit. And that's where a converting mm -hmm. website is really so, so important. But yeah. you, you think about it is um, COVID did us some real good things in some ways because we've been arguing the real estate agents need to get out of the home inspection portion of it because yeah. I know you've had it said and you have radon testing or you have the other things that are available and that the buyer thinks this is a great idea and so do you because they really need this stuff. Mm -hmm. And when they go back to the real estate agent and say, oh, you don't need that, just get a basic home inspection. Yeah. You know, and so we get a past that and we get past their negative comments to their colleagues in their office about us doing our job effectively. Mm -hmm. um, so um, going directly to the public is good, but it takes a bit of time to make that yeah. really build up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, on occasion, like, you know, we always ask how you found us during the scheduling process and that uh -huh. gets tracked in our, our uh, system and... You know, a lot of times it's, you know, especially when we're following up post and, you know, after the inspection was scheduled online, that conversation is, hey, how'd you, how'd you hear about us? And they'll say, oh, you guys have a great website, or they'll say, you guys have tons more reviews than anybody else, you know, and, and again, that goes back to, you know, we've got systems in place. That's not on accident. That's intentionally we've gone and created systems around how do we get more reviews online and and, you know, what kind of website do we want to have and, and how do we, you know, manage some of those things like the traffic and, and you know, how do we track phone calls and that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, like we were talking about, like, you know, marketing and growth, that's done intentionally. You know, you have to plan for that stuff going back to that, that conversation. A lot of times we call it business development because that's really what we're doing is developing our right. business in all different areas. So the Savvy Inspector, we only serve home inspectors for digital marketing, and we certainly understand how business comes in. We've been in that business forever and ever. Um, so that really has worked well. It's not like if you were a plumber, I would not have no idea how to help you get business in. I'd have to learn that myself. But because we've been in the home inspection business for years, and that's all we serve, uh, then it's, um, it's easy to, to make that happen uh, for yeah. our clients. Let me just say one thing before we move on that, from that. But... Um... Just this morning, I, I had uh, Beth, uh, you know, who runs the the done for you services side of the Savvy Inspector and the, the online marketing. Um, I asked her yesterday to do a quick little exercise um, for me. We're, we're, we're pursuing an opportunity in our Washington branch and having conversations with another company. Um, and that conversation has turned towards like, you know, we've got a website and they've got a website you know, which one should we go after? And, and I only gla glanced at it, so don't quote me too much on it, but um, we were just kind of comparing those numbers and, and the traffic and, and performance. Um, and their, their website looks great. It's done very well. Um, but if you go back and look at ours, comparing the numbers and some of the statistics, um, our website really just blows them out of the water, honestly. Um, so, you know, that's, they're, they're very proud of their website. They've, they've had some other professionals build it and all that. Um, but it, the, the, that exercise that uh, Beth worked on kind of pulled, you know, showed that we're in a great, great place. Our traffic is through the roof compared to theirs. And while they have a good website and it's nice and pretty, uh, it doesn't have the same traffic. It doesn't rank as well. It doesn't um, convert as well as ours does too. So. Um, just wanted to throw that out there too. It's, it was kind of, um, just felt good to know that we've got a great, great team working for us and they're really producing results for us. So pretty <laughs> counts in some things, but I'd rather have a website that was butt ugly that produced results, wouldn't you? Yeah, I want uh, those dollars. Yeah, I mean, that website, the only thing it's there for is to turn uh, leads into customers. Yeah. Um, so I don't care if it's ugly or pretty and all that, but so many home inspectors are hung up on that. Oh, somebody said my website really, they like it. And I said, well, how many uh, inspections did it, did you book from it? 
well, some, I don't know. I said, well, how do you know? And of course they don't even have Google analytics installed or webmaster yeah. tools. So they have no idea what they've done, but they're wed to that. You know what? That's a beautiful website. I like it. They're personally yeah. invested in it. I'm personally invested in making more money. Yeah. Okay. So I don't really <laughs> give a damn what it looks like. Well, I'll tell you too, Ken, I, I, I've told you this before. Uh, in fact, that, that was me when, when we were having conversations, when I was having, it was actually Casey, I think uh -huh. um, back in the day, you know, I was, I was talking to him about, you know, maybe converting to the savvy done few services website. And that's what I told him. I was like, Hey, I, you know what? I, I've got a good company. They're doing a good job. The website's really great. I get tons of people saying it looks amazing. Um, and he had the same conversation. Like, would you rather have one that converts people into like paying customers or would you have one that looks pretty? Um, and I'll, I'll tell you too, like the way that's how I found the savvy in, in, <laughs> in the first place. I was like, dang, as I built my very first website, total budget, didn't cost me hardly anything. Um, and then we started struggling, you know, I quit my full-time job to go inspect full-time and if we weren't just getting traffic. And so I did a search, uh, how to improve your website or something like that to, to earn more business. And this was back in like 2012, 13, something like that. And I found a, a, an article written by the savvy inspector Ken Compton, I think his name was on it. And it said, seven mistakes you're making on your website. And I was making all of them. So at that point, I'm just, I know I'm, I have no clue what I'm doing. I'm just going to get somebody who knows what they're doing. So we're, we're very lucky and blessed that we found Savvy. And, and it's really changed our lives, honestly, um, to uh, this mindset and, and what's possible, you know. That's so, awesome. Uh, and I think one of the things about it is when you look at Gary Keller's book, The One Thing, I mean, I, th I don't think the one thing is the business owner should be working on the website. Yeah. Um, first, no offense to these business owners. They have no clue what they're doing. Okay. And secondly, technology changes weekly. I mm -hmm. mean, we log into another dashboard and damn, the things change. And we're like, okay, <laughs> all right. Today, I said to Brandon before we logged on, I mean, I've downloaded Google. Uh, Windows 11, I hope we can run the webinar. Yeah. There's no telling what's going to happen. So it's it's a lot of complicated things or they'll say, I have a staff person that does it. But we have dozens of employees that work on very specialty aspects of your account. So how could your one employee know all those things? They don't. So yeah. you just don't leverage that. But I will tell you in 2022, it's going to be more important than it was even in 2021. Because I think, Brandon, that you and I will both agree that no matter what happens, somebody's going to buy houses, right? There's going to be a segment of folks. Mm -hmm. Now, they might not go to the real estate agent because guess what? They're not home. Even in Florida, and we're wide open here in South Florida. Um, the fact of the matter is you go to the real estate office today, there might be one or two top producers in there utilizing the tools they have in the office, but the rest of the place is empty. Yeah. And then you also look at this, the... the um, IRS is looking at reclassifying um, the real estate agents uh, to see if they can get them as employees. Okay. And so when that happens in the broker has to pay minimum wage and taxes to these, what I call non-producing, I don't want to say deadbeat realtors, but ones that don't know how to generate leads. Yeah. You think the broker's going to keep them in there? Yeah. Of course they're not. So all of the people that home inspectors may have gotten one or two inspections from a year, they're out. Okay, so going direct to the public is really truthfully the way um, to do it. And it offers us great things to work with younger agents. I mean, if you don't see the value of YouTube, we probably won't be talking to you about online marketing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but if you have real estate agents that really understand the power and leverage of the Internet to get more leads for themselves. I mean, you home inspectors now have a whole basket of tools we can work with them on um, to help them grow to build relationships. So we can't see in the office. Who cares? Yeah. Uh, we can see on Zoom. Yeah, and, and just to that point, too, I mean, um, earlier uh, last year, I guess summer of 2021, I had a conversation. We inspected the house next door to another inspector. We didn't know that until he approached me. He's like, hey, you know, I do home inspections. We've been pretty new here, too, he was telling me. And, um, you know, he was, you know, to your point about, like, the younger agents, you know, he was new just like we were to town. And uh, he was like, you know, we're, I'm struggling. And we were slammed. I mean, we were cooking. I mean, I was training another inspector, so I was doing all the work at that time. I was doing 10, 12 inspections a week. And I was like, I was feeling bad for the guy. He's like, it's, here we are, peak season, home buying season, and he, he's dead in the water. Um, but he was saying, you know, it's, it's hard out here because, you know, the 
agents are they're all like you know if, you, if you're not part of the good old boys club you're you you got no chance you know doing inspections for them and so you know we've we've found a way luckily that uh we've we've been able to get our foot in the door here and kind of break into the market a little more quickly than he has but um you know again you know we we push those reviews we push the website and, and we get tons of people especially here in idaho so many people coming from out of state uh, right now fleeing the west coast especially um those people are finding us online and mm -hmm. we're right at the top ranked number one within you know a couple months of, of starting a website and they see us right there on top. They see our reviews, you know, over 250 reviews in less than two years. And, you know, it's, it's been a huge blessing to, 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 you know, have that online presence. So. And so as the population migrates from one state to the other, um, and that's still continuing today, uh, people don't know somebody in a new area. I mean, we didn't know people here in South Florida where we went, and we use the internet every day just like homebuyers do to find a plumber, to find an electrician, and the services that we need. We don't, I mean, we might ask the people we know here, but how do we know what quality they are? It might just be their church buddy or something. So we yeah. go online, we read those reviews, we do the same things we teach, and so it's worked out um, quite well. So I guess my uh, point would be to continue to redirect some of your marketing budget from things that may not be here tomorrow and really invest in your online presence. It's uh, the way to go, I think, for the future. Uh, um, I can't see us going back to big, massive Keller Williams offices, three, 400 people in there. I mean, it costs too much. Um, so I think brokers are wise enough and saying, that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen. All right. Anything else in 2021 that just made you insane? <laughs> oh, um, one lesson we learned, um, and it took us to the first week of this year, finally, it kind of came to a head is, um, you know, with we had a marketing person, um, you know, all of our companies, both of our companies, nobody, we don't have a central office. We all, everybody works from home and um, we had a marketing gal who was working for us for like 18 months and I liked her. I knew her in high school, actually. Uh, so she was a friend of mine. Um, but uh, I realized uh, finally towards the end of this year and into the beginning of this, uh, I guess last year and into the beginning of this year, uh, when I thought I had a good system for her to follow and track, it wasn't good enough. And so we, we ended up splitting ways. Um, we didn't get the results we wanted. And ultimately, it comes back to me as the business owner to say, you know what, uh, could I have made a better hire? You know, could I have had better systems to hold her accountable to the activities that I really wanted her to do? Um, and so, you know, that, that's part of, that's the beauty of being a home or a business owner, right? It's like, yeah, you make some mistakes and they probably cost you lots of money, but hopefully you can learn from those the first time and, and not repeat them. Uh, and so uh, that's what we're working on now is, is, building a better marketing system so that I'm not doing it right now. I'm doing it in both states. I'm doing marketing in both states. Mm -hmm. um, but can we improve that process so that we can get almost anybody who fits the criteria of that job description and that, that profile uh, that we want to fit that job and can they execute it almost strictly not, not on what they know about marketing, but on the system that we built and that we have proven is working. So Brandon, I couldn't agree with you more. And I know you and I are both a big fan of the E-Myth Revisited. So if people really wonder why procedures and systems are important, please read that book. Um, you can listen to it on Audible as you drive around from one inspection to the other. Mm -hmm. I would encourage you to do it. There's another book I always mention. It's Jim Collins, Good to Great. And basically, have we hired the right person? So he calls that getting them on the bus. Right. And then he says, once you've hired a great person, do you have them on the right seat on the bus? And before you terminate somebody, ask yourself those questions. Of course, we have the right path tool to help us with that. But even at the Savvy Inspector, I'm just going to fess straight up too. our procedures. Well, I thought they were good. We're not good enough. We had to replace a person and one of uh, her, her uh, husband died. And uh, just suddenly, and she has two little kids. And so she was just going to stay home and try to get herself together. Well, we tried to s put another person in there and it worked. The procedures worked for the person that was in there, but the person that followed her wasn't really capable of 
doing the job successfully because our procedures weren't good enough. Yeah. So we've retooled and looked back again and said, our goal is to hire not somebody that's really super skilled, but to hire somebody who's got a good personality who, who can do the job and let them follow our procedures. Yeah. As a business owner, we're responsible for the outcome. Why mm -hmm. not lay out? Here's what we want to achieve the outcome. Yep. Now, is that a, a shitty, tedious process to do it? Kind of is, yeah. I mean, it sucks. Let's <laughs> just be honest. Yeah, I mean, I'm in it right now. Like, you know, I'd like to get another marketing person. Obviously, I, I kind of have to because um, I can't uh, run two businesses and two different marketing systems. But, you know, th that's the beauty of it is once I figure the one out, it should just turn over right over and work on both both branches, right? Um, and so, you know, we're seeing success right now already with, with what I'm doing. Now it's how do I document that in a way that's repeatable hundreds of times, if not thousands of times, um, so that, you know, we can just slide someone right in. They know exactly step by step with checklists and scripts and pre written emails, like, you know, whatever it is you're doing. Um, and, and then we just slide that, that in there. And then once we really find that that system works, then you can really start to talk about scaling and, and adding more people to do those same activities if you need to, right? And so uh, that's that's what we're excited about here this this coming year is is really pinning that what is going to drive success and growth most quickly, and then bringing in someone good who can really run that system. So if you're a multi inspector firm, this is the thing we say. This is what we do. We let the person doing the job write the procedures. And then we tweak them from there. We, we give them to somebody else in the firm. And if they can follow the directions that the person wrote that's doing the job, if the next person can follow the directions and do exactly the same thing, it's perfect. Okay. So we kind of are putting a litmus test on it. But think about this. If you're a one-man shop, could you hire anybody without systems or procedures? Don't you think the home inspector, the new hire, has an opportunity or a right to really know what they're supposed to do and how they're supposed to do it? what photos they're taking, when they should show up, what they're going to wear. I mean, don't you think we need these things? I mean, you, you could expect them to read your mind, uh, but that's, uh, we've tried that too, and it doesn't work very well. You know when you get hired at a Ouija board as part of the approved equipment, uh, <laughs> that's probably not a good thing. Yeah. Um, so uh, that is a good thing. Let, let's switch, because 2021 – had some unique challenges. We overcame it. Everybody in our firm, we worked with them at the Savvy Inspector, which is our parent company. Um, we worked with our clients there at the Savvy Inspector to make sure they had recruiting tools and tools to combat the inventory shortage and waiving the inspection. We worked through all that. But 2022 is really kind of a little bit uncertain when you start reading some of the headlines with interest rates could rise four times in 2022. You've got inflation, real wages are stagnant. Really, now you're in stagflation potential where inflation is up and wages are stagnant. Um, so really, how many units are there going to be there to inspect? So before we start on this conversation, one of the things I said, you better be a damn good marketer because during 2006 and 2007, look, I bet 40% of the market went out of business. No need for it. The reason why they went out of business, they don't know how to market a business. Right. A couple of years ago, John Watkins, our good friend in Nashville, said my dog could sell a home in eight hours in Nashville mm -hmm. because it was so easy. You know, it's yeah. like fishing in a barrel. OK, you know, but this is not what it's going to be in 2022. Uh, you know, it's not going to be fishing in a barrel. It's going to be we're going to have to get out there and put on our best marketing skills. So with that in mind, what you thinking about what you going to do more? What work? What, what new things are you thinking about adding? Yeah, so the big thing right now, like I mentioned, is is really getting a good system that can work. Um, you know, you know, even just like it, one of the things I've been doing here the last few weeks. Now that we, once we uh, you know separated ourselves from our marketing person, um, I'm just calling agents uh, after the inspection. I'll, so I'll have a conversation with the buyer's agent and seller's agent, and you know, sometimes I'm fishing for an opportunity there. Like it, you know, if it's a top producing agent, we've worked with bunch of times just ask them hey how's it going um you know how did the inspection go by the way is there anybody else that that we should maybe work with in your office just having those conversations and then um you know one of the things that's been huge for us actually is our our certified movement ready our pre-listing inspections 
Um, and, and those have really taken off in our Washington branch, especially. And so I call up the listing agents and say, hey, in fact, I had a conversation last week. Um, for whatever reason, that deal fell through on that inspection we did. And he's, he, yeah, I can tell he's a little bummed, but, you know, they backed out for whatever reason. And I told him, hey, you know what, had we gone in and done a pre-listing inspection, um, you know, we probably wouldn't have had that issue, right? They, they would have known that there was tons of issues and you would have got a better buyer in there knowing all the information up front. So, um, so you know, just, just simple things like that, especially talking to, you know, if anybody listening here is just a one-man shop trying to grow his company, those follow-up calls are so powerful because nobody else does them because they don't have time for it, whatever, right? Um, you know, that's how we jumped in and got tons of reviews right away here in Idaho too. It was, you know, I, I wasn't super busy. We we're just trying to get our boots on the ground and get some traction going. And so I, I maybe do five or six inspections right there that first few months a week. And I'd make sure I was calling the clients after, after each inspection and saying, hey, how to go? Is there any questions we can a- answer at this point? And I mean, you know, we get everything in there. So they're like, no, everything was great. Thank you so much. And then I asked for that review. And so, you know, for someone, especially just starting out, or trying to grow their company a little bit, you know, just being consistent on some of those basic things um, are, are so important. And then especially for us, even, be, you know, even now that we've grown our company and, and uh, we've got staff and multiple inspectors doing some of those things still consistently, those things still work. Um, and they really help build relationships with the clients and the agents. Um, so I don't know if that directly answers the, the question. That was a kind of a specific, but... Um, sure just being consistent on some of the basic things is, is what's most important. Then you can get all cutesy and, and creative on some of the other things once you, you kind of establish yourself, but the basics are really where, where it matters the most. So one of the things is, here's a tip. We were going to hold off to the end, but you've alluded to it now. One of the tips is when you finish with the inspection, call the listing agent. Mm-hmm. Okay. So let's talk about that for a minute because that's a huge tip. That's one of those real small uh, adjustments you can make that can affect big changes in your firm mm-hmm. because that listing agent generally just does listings or they have a team. Okay, so when you call back and you say, hey, you know, this is Ken from Southern Home Inspection Services, and oh, by the way, just wanted to tell you that we're finished with the inspection so the seller can come back anytime they so desire, and we've set all the settings back to where they were, uh, when they were on, and, and uh, oh, by the way, I noticed that you didn't want me to let the cat or the dog out on the work order, the cat and the dog's in the house, you know, so everything's good, we're set, I didn't find the GFCIs were all reset, no, but what I want, I would say to them is, you know, that I see your name as a listing agent a lot of times, and hopefully you're reading the reports that we produce, and you find them to be very useful and not scary. And what we'd like to ask for you today is to put us on your approved vendor list so that either you, when you have a sale, or your agents on your team have a sale, uh, we'd have an opportunity to serve you as well. Mm-hmm. So that is, how long does that take you, Brandon? You get you a little script, two seconds. Yeah. You're going out the door anyway. Couldn't you just call from your truck when you, first thing you do is you get in there and you make that quick call? Yeah. And you leave a voicemail by using my favorite product, Slide Dial. Slide out. We'll leave a link under the podcast here for the slide out. But basically, slide out bypasses their phone on their cell phone and it goes right into their voicemail. Leave an effective voicemail. Mm-hmm. Okay. And ask for the business. So that is one small change or adjustment in what you do that can affect big changes. Because what if 10% of those in the first 60 days then started referring to you? Okay, then we can start the other aspects of it, right? Yeah. I mean, that to me is, you know, a, a, just a small, small change. Yeah. That uh, adjustment really that can have a big change o- over time. Mm-hmm. So in 2022, are you going to hire? Yeah, we're definitely going to hire. We we did lose an inspector earlier this year, which put us short. And so we're, we're kind of in that process again. Um, and yeah, I mean, you know, going back to what we first started out was like, you know, 2.5 average inspections per agent. You, you've got to consistently go seek new business. And that's just the reality of it. And so, um, you know, when we first moved here to Idaho, uh, I learned a tough lesson, which was, you know, I kind of got complacent with Washington. We had, 
we had two or three inspectors at the time. We had a marketing gal who was part-time, you know, her McKenzie. Um, and we had a scheduling gal and things were going great. We were making some money. Um, and you know, I stopped kind of pushing the, the marketing and the growth. Well, what happens, we'd lose an inspector. Um, you know, we have a little bit of turmoil with some other turnover with, the, with McKinsey left. And so we had to replace her and, and we started doing, we started going downhill. We were not growing by any means, and, but the market was still hot and, and growing as well at the same time. So, um, you know, we, we lost, you know, some opportunity there, I think. And, and so, um, so yeah, the answer to that question is yes, we're hiring. <laughs> we're, we're always looking for good people and, um, you know, we, we even if the, you know you can't be scared by all this talk. You know, maybe a recession's coming, inflation, um, maybe transactions are going to be down this year. You can't be scared by that. You got to push through and continue to to have that mindset of growth and seeking opportunity. Uh, and that's that's just our approach. Mm -hmm. So when you look at the all the things that are happening in the market with the mandates and the number of people leaving different professions and those that haven't gotten back into the workplace yet. Do you think it's a real opportunity to recruit some talented people in the home inspection business that maybe haven't even thought about the home inspection business as a, as a career? Yeah. I mean, um, you know, like I said, you know, we're always looking for good people, people that are talented, that are driven, um, you know, having conversations like, you know, I've had conversations with Sarah actually, um, you know, maybe we've had a great server at, at dinner and that person would have been a, would be a great you know, um, marketing person, just because they did a great job. They were a good communicator. They, they, they gave us a great service. And, and even just in the short amount of time that we spent with them, um, you know, they built a relationship of rapport with us. And that's what we look for, right? Um, so, you know, with, with, you know, people leaving their jobs and, or searching careers or losing their jobs because they didn't get the, the vaccine or whatever, you know, um, there's there's people out there seeking opportunities that may be different, like you said, than what they've been doing in the past. So so it could be inspectors, it could be marketing people, um, whatever it is. You know, we've got a spot for good people. I think that you and I established early on in this conversation today that we're looking for talented people that can follow our procedures. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter what they did in their first life, does it? If they have good interpersonal skills, let's say that your job is inside marketing rep. Okay, they don't necessarily need all those great interpersonal skills. However, if you were going to combine inside marketing rep with some phone work, then we would want somebody like that. So your server might be really perfect. Bartenders are another one. Mm -hmm. um, the restaurant business has been decimated. Um, and so what happens is you get somebody with great interpersonal skills, we can teach you the rest. Mm -hmm. Okay, but what mm -hmm. about people to be your replacement, Brandon. I mean, I mean, if you've got a home inspector, are we looking at them just to be a home inspector or her to be a home inspector? Or are we saying, do they have potential to move up the ladder? When you look at it, what are you thinking? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, I, I feel like, especially kind of going into, you know, middle, maybe middle of 2019, actually. Um, that was about when we had moved out here. Maybe it was 2020, I should say. It was 2020. So 2020, we, we had moved out here and everybody on our staff, we had good people, but they all had just a job. And on occasion, we'd have a conversation with an inspector or, or somebody else who said, hey, you know, how can I, I going to get more money? I'll, I'd like a raise, you know. And so we found that, that one of the weaknesses we had was uh, helping our, our staff see the value, not only in their employment currently, but like what could be next for them? Um, mm -hmm. What other opportunities could we offer? And we didn't want them to feel like, you know, especially, you know, for example, the inspectors, you know, they're just stuck doing inspections and, and they don't really get an increase in their wages. Um, and so we wanted to, to show them that there's, there's, we've got goals, we've got a vision. And so we created a, a, a organizational chart and we said, this is what we want to look like in five years from now. This is, and then I'd have a conversation individually with them. This is where you're at on this org chart. Where do you want to be? Uh, if, if we continue to grow at this pace and we achieve this in, you know, three to five years, where do you see yourself on this org chart? And so that was a conversation we had to show them that, you know, there is further growth and opportunity within the company, not just like you're stuck in this current position. And that was one of the great things is having those conversations. You kind of see, 
you know, where the, the employees are, you know, we've got one inspector in, in Washington. He does a great job. Um, he, he, he's got great, we call, we call it bedside manner with the, the clients and that's how the agents love him for that, you know. Um, but he is, he's not really ambitious beyond just doing home inspections. I've even asked him, hey, do you want to learn how to do this or that service, like a sewer scope? He's not really interested. He just likes doing the home inspection. That's great. I got a spot for him. Um, and then on the, on the flip side of it, we had, we had <laughs> another guy who, was, who had experience running teams. He loved doing home inspections, but he also wants to be a part of something bigger. And so having that organizational chart and saying, hey, Jason, this is what, what we want to do. Where do you see yourself here in three to five years if you grow with the company and we you know, meet these goals and, and grow to this size? And, and he really wanted to be um, you know, a, a big part of the leadership team, training inspectors and making sure things are, are run properly and quality control, that kind of stuff. Um, unfortunately, he took another opportunity. He, he found a job that we just couldn't match uh, his wages on that one. Um, so there's some frustrations there, but, but that's one of the things that we've done to, to help others see you know, the value in, and help them understand that we do have a vision of what the company is. And, and it's not just a job you're stuck in. We want to provide an opportunity for you to grow within the company. Right. We always hire within. Look at Jeannie Wells. Uh, you know Jeannie well. Yeah. Um, and she started off on the support team and she's worked in different positions over the years with a savvy inspector. And in late 2021, she was named a business development manager. OK, that's a that's a corporate job now. OK, so she's not working on individual teams. She's working corporately. And so that made a big difference. And when we go to hire, we ask, where do you like, you know, what would you like to see? Where do you like to see yourself in three to five years? Wave that magic wand. Where do you uh -huh. want to see yourself? So then when I'm talking to them about it, I'm talking to them, sure, about being a home inspector. But I'm also thinking, man, wonder if this person could be a future leader of the company. Yeah. Because when you the emf basic premise is you and I should go away and the system should still run. Uh -huh. We go away to the beach and we still make money, right? Yeah. That's cool. I mean, that, that's what we're after. Yeah. I want to follow up on one thing that you said that was really profound, and that was don't worry about what people are saying about the market in 2022. Okay. And I think that is very profound from this reason. You can't control things that are bigger than you. Okay. So in the recession is clearly bigger than you or your firm or interest rate hikes or inventory shortages. Those are all things that are um, uh, bigger than you. Okay, so what happens is you get dealt a hand of cards. Winners play the hand the correct way. Okay, losers don't. Okay, so, so there are winners and losers in each market. And, and in 2007 and 2008, the savvy inspectors, people grew, our, our team members grew, um, clients grew, and, and they didn't shrink. Okay, where everybody else was going out of business, this, that, and the other, our guys weren't. But you know the difference, Brandon, between our members and the, um, the rank and file home inspectors out there? Our members had a plan. And it removed fear and anxiety. And what they did was they worked their plan. If you've got a solid plan and you're working that plan, you can forget what about everybody else is doing. Yeah, you have the, the interest rates are up. And guess mm -hmm. what happens? So there's fewer buyers. Guess what? I'm a better marketer than most people. I'll get your business. Yeah. Okay, how about home inspectors that go out of business? Could we get their gobble up their market share? Because their agents are still going to have clients. Yeah. Okay, so the fact of the matter is, I think that um, is there an opportunity then to look back at agents, not only invest in your online presence, but w we look at real estate agents in two ways, as you well know, top producer, not top producer. Why would you spend a nickel on non top producers? They're not a consistent source of business. It's like social media. You say, oh, well, I get some inspections from there. So did we. Mm -hmm. But is it a consistent source of business? Right. It's not. Okay. So what happens is you have to look at the non-consistent sources of business and say, can I eliminate those and redirect my resources on things that deliver day in and day out? And that comes from planning. Mm -hmm. um, so you just can't say, ooh, I'm going to do this or what am I going to do tomorrow? When we're in a down market or in a, in a crazy market, you just can't do it. So those home inspectors that will make it will plan their work and work their plan. Yeah. And if they don't, sad for them because it, it could be tough. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that's one of the big things for us. You know, we've gone even as far as to say specifically, you know, for especially for our, our Idaho branch, we have different goals for each, each um, branch. But um, we found 
the, the thing that would make the biggest difference for us here as far as the growth of our company, you know, it, we're, we're really a tiny market. There was less than, I had it written down somewhere. I think there was 2021, there was 3,300 transactions all year. So yeah. we're, we're a tiny, tiny market. <laughs> um, so the thing that we said to ourselves is we, we do need to, we need to add 200 inspections this year. It's kind of a realistic goal to us. Um, which would blow our, our, our record um, out of the water. Um, but um, how can we do that and who do we need to go after? And so what we've done is we've identified about 100 agents who are top producing agents and said, how can we get five inspections out of 40 of these agents? And so that's our goal is to add five inspections from 40 different agents. And, and I think... You know, we've already made some great progress. We, we we're doing one today. It was our first inspect, inspection from a meeting we did last week um, for a top producing agent. They did almost 100, 100 transactions here last year. Um, and so that we got number one in the books already. So we're, we're, we're moving on it. And, and uh, that's, that's how we've, we've kind of approached dealing with, you know, these different changes within the market and the, and the fluidity and the and unpredictability. Um, go after those consistent top producing agents like you're talking about. So uh, there's, there's a lot of other things to, to it as well. Um, you know, top producers are going to have business no matter what. Some, the real estate agents there, the other ones will go by the wayside. So um, that, that is a, a definitely a strategy that you need to use is go after them. Then what you have to do is say, what does go after them mean? <laughs> yeah. And so you list down the things that your staff would engage in to build those relationships with them. You don't have to build relationships with people face to face. You can build relationships with people in a variety of ways. Mm -hmm. um, you know, products and services get sold at the savvy inspector too, and we haven't talked to people. Um, so, you know, because they trust us. And so that, that's how it works. So I wanna just um, give one more tip before we get into anything else you wanna share with us. Um, one of the things that happens is, this was kind of a unique thing that we found is, that we kind of always hated the agents list. The broker said, I got to have three people on a list. Well, that was dumb, but you know, it, it's, I've leveraged it our way. So mm -hmm. what happens is you got three people on a list. And then when you go to an inspection um, that you've never been on before, why not talk to that real estate agent and try to get on that list? Okay, because the more agents list that you're on, that's perfect because here's what happens. The agent gives the list to the home buyer. The home buyer, 78% of them immediately go to the internet mm -hmm. and they check you out. And if we have your, if we could have your presence, if another home inspector could have your presence, they'd get business like you do. Because you know what happens? They're looking at your reviews. They're looking at other things. They're looking at what other people say. They're looking at your website to see if it makes sense for them. They have to convince themselves you're not in the convincing business. Mm -hmm. And so when they do, they select you. And when they decide you're right for them, price is a secondary consideration because they want somebody to prevent them from buying a money pit. If they think it's you and it's $50 difference, they're not balking. Right. Okay. You're going to see that more and more because so many people get a low price home inspector. They know less, they inspect less. That's why they charge less. They don't want that. They want to select their own home inspector they feel comfortable that can protect them from buying the money pit. So the big tip is get on every real estate agent's approved home inspector list in your market. Because if you've got a great online presence, you will crank some business out just by that. Okay, so two tips today on small adjustments that you can make in your business for some really dramatic changes, really dramatic changes. Yeah, I'll just add my thought there. You know, if, if I were going back and starting over and doing it again, um, Definitely. So, so I went to high school with a kid. Um, he was a year behind me, I think. And anyways, his parents now own the biggest, the big, actually a, a couple of big real estate offices, Keller Williams offices. He works on a team and his parents own it. Um, that was really where I got my start is working in that office and leveraging mm -hmm. that relationship a little bit uh, to get in and, and kind of tell you to your point here is, Rather than saying here, we've got, you know, say here in Idaho, I've got, you know, say it's 1,500 agents. Like I could probably over a, a year or two, I can probably get a hold of 1,500 agents, convince a bunch of them to get on the list. And that would be easy, I think. Um, 
if I were doing it again, I would pick one office and I'd start there. Drill deep into that one office. Maybe it's a bigger office. Leverage your relationships and have frank conversations. And I think that's important. You know, if you go into a conversation and say, hey, you know what? Uh, I see you do a bunch of business. We do a bunch of business with Chris too. Um, I would love to, to work with you. And, and, and um, you know, we want to do business with you. You know, have those open and, and frank conversations. People appreciate that, I think. And, and say, hey, my goal is to get on your referral list. You know, we've done a little bit of like coupons or incentives, maybe a steep discount of like $100 to say, hey, I'm willing to do this one at, at break even with you um, just to get the first one, see how we work together and, and hopefully earn a spot on that referral list. And uh, I think that's a great, great start. to, to Yeah, to it's, a, it's a good one. You know, the other thing I just want to follow up on one other point that's too important is to bypass it. You looked at um, the number of transactions on average that you got from your real estate agent uh, referrals, and it was 2.5. And one of the things I would even go further, I would take my top producers and hopefully your coding top producers. I know you are, but I'm talking to our target audience here that's listening to your coding, um, you know, where the business came from. But what happens is if it comes from an agent, let's say you got four this year from that agent, five or six but that agent has a hundred transactions. Mm -hmm. I would be going to that agent and saying, I noticed that you gave us five home inspections last year. Thank you. God bless you. Um, if it wasn't for wonderful folks like you, our progress wouldn't be possible. However, what I also noticed was that you did a hundred units. So my question today is if, could you help me understand what it would take for us to get more units from you? Yeah. Then I'd hush. Let them tell me, what it would take to get those extra units because they already know you like and trust you. Wouldn't it be easier to get more units from that person than to go out and convince somebody else you're right for them to refer? Mm -hmm. So how many home inspectors? We call that the average lifetime transaction value. So the average value of a referral source, what is it? What is their value? 12 inspections a year, 15. And when you start looking at other things that you can do for them, when somebody's giving you 15 or 20 or 30 a year, it's way easier to reinvest some marketing dollars and efforts to help them proceed further than it is to go out and somebody's yeah. doing 100 transactions and say they already got a home inspector and you're saying, I'll oh, use us, that guy's a chump. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. just harder. Yeah, so sure. start thinking about that's three tips. Look at the people that give you a lot of business and say, is there more business available there that I'm not getting and have a conversation? Mm -hmm. So yeah. to me, oh, 2022 is going to call for that. Yeah, no, I think, I think those three tips are, are plenty, even for just like a one guy starting out, just doing those three things um, consistently. Uh, I wish I had <laughs> a resource like this when I first started. Um, me too. Yeah. So no, uh, just those three things, just doing those consistently would be a great start uh, to really you know, anybody new or, or even just, you know, who's been around but feels like they have room to grow still. Um, great, great information there. If you don't have room to grow, this is where you're going backwards, isn't it? Yeah. You read, there's no such thing as standstill. You're either moving forward or you're moving back. Yep. So, because somebody else will have your business. Brandon, thank you very much for being on a, on the podcast today. I appreciate it very much. I know Brandon is going to be doing some hosting of the podcast events. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, that will give me a little time to maybe take my bride on vacation a place or two and um, try to work on my bucket list a minute. I've gotten a, a little bit older. So, uh, so it's not all work every day for Ken. So Brandon, again, thanks for being on. Uh, we appreciate it. We'll have resources under the podcast uh, when you come to it. Um, if you go ahead and get signed up, we podcast every couple of weeks. We have great things. We have all kinds of industry guests, uh, not just successful home inspectors to talk to you about things that they're doing and give you way valuable tips. So tune in and uh, catch up with us each week. And uh, um, we'd love to talk to everybody as soon as we can. Brandon, thanks again. Thanks, sir. Bye now.